This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter and in the Sorgatron Media Studios by myself in the Sorgatron Media Studios. Just I'm, I, I'm just like visually proving the quarantine is happening still, even though we're, we're up here in the, in the office. Uh, but with us, we got everybody is here remotely, of course, coming at us from Studio C in the Big D is John Chichilla. How's it going? I can see your pipes. It's very steampunk. You can see my pipes? Yes. They're huge, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great visual. I'm glad they, I and, and it reached just above your title too. He's a gadget, he's a gadget guru with Big Bank International Esquire. I pump the iron. He pumps the iron. <laughs> also with us, also pumping the iron in Studio D in the big C. Is that what we're calling it? Yes. yes! <laughs> I feel weird saying that. I feel, I'm like, that sounds mean, but okay. That's what's on the note card, so I'm going to say it. Hi. <laughs> Do you want to show your pipes off so you can uh, uh, also be... Uh... Well, it's funny because I, I we're laughing about my how my this is my living room and it looks like a basement between the paneling and the outdoor <laughs> staircase and the glass block window. But yes, this is my living room. Welcome to the Chillin's in the basement. <laughs> Dutters looks like she's in the basement. I, and I don't think our next guest has a base. It's Brian Crawford of pghmuseums.org on the line with us this week. How you doing, Brian? I am highly medicated. That's the only reason why I am <laughs> awake. Yeah. That's my awesome thing of the week. I'm putting it out there right now. Listen, we're, uh, we're, I do have a basement. We're all it's highly great. medicated. Oh, you do have a basement. I do. Yeah, yeah. A great storage unit. You know what? I, I do want to say real quick, if I, if I can take some some time. Uh, I'm really excited because every time I'm invited onto the show, it's because they, they can't get gutters. It's always <laughs> like, oh, we can't get gutters in here. Let's get this guy in. At least he's got a mouth. You know, he can talk. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm like the B team. So it, it, it's nice to be brought in. With Chilla and Dutters, I feel like I, I've ascended into the A team here for all. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Brian. Uh, and I don't know why the switcher isn't working. There it is. Hello. Um, but uh, this is the Awesome Cast. Please check out everything at awesomecast.com. If you're on visual with us, I forgot a dongle. So you're not getting any articles in visual form. So sorry about that. Podcasters, you're not going to notice the difference. It's going to look exactly the same as it does every week to you podcasters. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> awesomecast.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Facebook, awesomecast. And please subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app. You can also uh, follow for video versions on our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube page. And of course, we're live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we are streaming on multiple platforms for awesomecast. But of course, the, the conversation, the discussion, is happening over on the facebook page unless something happens to facebook like uh this apparently happened to us on wrestling mayhem show last week after this show um facebook went down it's been doing that for a lot of people um and and it seems uh so but thankfully if if this goes away hop over to our periscope because it's probably okay <laughs> that's it. so there's a little tip for you guys on the live right off the bat so it's nice to it's nice to have those backups and restream anyways if you are catching us later uh please uh, uh you can tweet us and then hashtag ac488 for the show uh so you can continue the conversation throughout the week whenever you do get around to listening to the show and if you want to be nope nope that's an old thing uh and also thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash awesome cast thank you to the people who do support the show our friends at the coffee club level matt weller john DeGore, and john carmen and at the fan of the show level the longest running uh, uh patreon supporter michael fedor and pghmuseums.org hello who is here <laughs> so i am here well at least i'm one of one of the people there you go and, and, and thank you everybody that does support the show you know there's a lot of craziness going on here so it's a you know really great that you guys still do have you know those that are uh um you know we understand 
and uh, and thank you so much. It means a lot to us and uh, with everything going on right now. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Dutters, what is Hi. going on? Harry Potter? Yeah, I guess. You, you <laughs> guess? As someone who's never actually, well, I've seen one movie out of sequence and never read any of the books. I guess this is exciting for Harry Potter fans. Uh, Mad Mike is doing his Legos over on the, the Monday Mayhem wrestling wrap up that we do. And and I, it's been a while since I've watched Harry Potter movies. And he's just like, you have time, go read the books. I'm like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> well, I just realized I have two awesome things. So I'll go through this one and then I'll tell you my other one because it involves a Mr. Diggy DeGore. Okay. Because uh, I want to give him a shout out. Uh, so the British Library uh, has a Harry Potter, a history of magic exhibit. And now it's available online through the magic of what is it google's and arts uh, google arts and culture so uh, you can go through you can check out different things uh, there's like an online exhibit artworks and art artifacts videos different collections uh sketches of jk rowling like early ones how to study like a wizard it's it's really neat actually if you go through the things and if you like the history of magic it's really neat too so i mean it's it's a cool place to kind of explore and go beyond the the books if you're reading the books or watching the movies mm-hmm but it's part of Google's arts and culture, which is really neat. So, yeah, explore outside your house. <laughs> so is this kind of like a Wikipedia for Harry Potter in some ways? Kind of, yes, but more in-depth. More, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, more, more, but more photos, more videos, that kind of good stuff. And also, if you click on Google's arts and culture, the first thing comes up is seven awesome facts about dinosaurs. So you can learn about dinosaurs, too, here and there. But yeah, my Diggy DeGore thing was, um, so Mr. Diggy DeGore invited me to his island on uh, Animal Crossing because he's going to mail me a porta potty <laughs> on the game. There's a lot in the of game toilet. or in real life? In the game, I wish it was real life. There's a lot of toilet-related things <laughs> in that game. I'm starting to see your your affinity for it. Yeah, there's, um, and he, uh, he actually has a whole room dedicated to toilets, and I tried to give him a gift of the upright... Um, toilet it's it's a urinal but they don't call that that in the game and he already had it so i was disappointed but he is sending me a porta potty by mail in animal crossing wow can i ask ask a question where is the <laughs> uh where's the greatest or, or where, where's the best place you've ever pooped in the bird <laughs> like the greatest like the the most ridiculous or wretched or like greatest <laughs> like oh this is like i would if i had to like go back to a bathroom this is the one i'm picking that one, the latter, <laughs> like a luxury bathroom or a very interesting bathroom. I feel like this is an, a PGH museums, like, but another venture, like PGH potties. <laughs> where oh, PGHpotties.org. I need to go get that domain. Yeah, that's we'll awesome. Work on that. <laughs> we just get on. I and could give like a top five. <laughs> yeah, could give a top five. <laughs> oh yeah, I've pooped all over this city. <laughs> I love it. Oh no. <laughs> Save it for the podcast and the new website. That's true. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> Brian, what's your awesome thing? Uh, the bathroom on the top floor of one Oxford cell. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, uh, it's great. It's got a view over the city. It's got a shower wait, up there. Wait, why you poop? It's got a shower? Oh, yeah. You can look over the gym? city while you're pooping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a shower up there. It's like the CEO's bathroom. It's fantastic. You're not pooping in the shower, are you? No, no. I don't even pee. Brian's inside. Batman. That's his office. <laughs> I wish. No, my last job, I've literally, I was able to poop all over the city in like luxurious offices, private clubs, and then of course, like you know, rat hole infested places as well. So, I'm, I'm an experienced pooper, and I see a cat on the <laughs> screen. That's fantastic. I've always been a fan of the bottom, the bottom <laughs> of the um, William Penn. There's oh, kind of like never... a. I've never pooped down there. I've pooped in the William Penn multiple times, but never downstairs, never in the basement. That would oh, be. Oh, that is a nice bathroom. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's very fancy. You feel it's like marble and very fancy. Mm-hmm. Very <laughs> feel very classy. Ponder say, Ponder in the chat room saying, "Just ask a runner. We've pooped everywhere." <laughs> oh. That's a good point. He's probably pooped in some some more interesting places than uh, than me. Maybe Steve, not as luxurious, but Steve's with the Omni Hotel, always clean. Uh, uh, no one that works there asks questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. If you ever are downtown and you gotta go, 
like they don't like lock their doors or anything. You could just like walk in, use the restroom, and you can get like a, a coffee or a drink afterwards if you <laughs> yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could be. Yeah, right. you could be completely just like, oh, I'm going to Starbucks and I'm going to go poop over here. So yeah, that's your, and it is nice. Omni Starbucks poop. Um, a true story. The like, uh, when senior year, we just randomly drove down to Pittsburgh from from like an hour and a half away where we lived in the middle of the night, which I'm sure was safe in, in 2000, 1999, whenever that was. And we had to go to the bathroom. We had no idea where we could go. And near the point, it used to be a Hilton. And I think it's something else now, the fancy hotel, like right there by the park. And mm-hmm. uh, we went and peed in there. And it was just like, the urinals are like gold. What is this? And and, oh, yeah. and Chachi and I always, always think back about that. Remember that time when we peed in the Hilton? Well, if you ever get a chance to relieve yourself at the Duquesne Club, they have like really like they have actual walls. And uh, when you leave and you wash your hands, they have actual cloth towels that you dry your hands with and you drop them into like a, a like a laundry bin. And I believe I've never been there like when they were open. I was always there before they opened, but they have shoes shining stations as well. So I believe you can actually then go sit there and get your shoes shined after you've uh, taken a dump. And this is, has, has been your pilot for Awesome Poop, coming soon yes. to Tron Media. <laughs> Brian, what is your non-poop-related awesome thing? Yes, so um, I got a new computer uh, lately, and I oh, actually... That you can use a... while you poop now! Oh, like, wait, good, is, yeah. this the one, is this the one that was... You had to return the one that was locked, and then... Yeah, so I, yeah, I bought a... I was trying to get a computer to do computer editing, and I, I went to buy a MacBook Pro. And when I got it, it was all sorts of issues. I'm not going to go into the whole story. It's too long. But basically, it was it was locked out through security settings from the previous owner, and there were no way to get rid of it. So I had to return it. And uh, when I returned it, I was watching the tracking number. It got delivered to them from UPS. So I immediately went onto the chat, and I said, hey, I need my money because i got to buy a new computer. This one was broken. There were all sorts of issues. I demanded a gift card. They gave me a gift card, and then there were still issues. So they basically they couldn't refund my credit card quick enough, and they couldn't stop the transaction to give me gift cards. So they gave me like, I swear it was almost eight hundred dollars worth of gift cards, way more than I even spent. And I ended up getting a Surface Pro Seven, essentially for free. Mm. And I was able to get the the keyboard and all of the supplies. And my awesome thing, I mean, I don't want to put the, even though the Surface Pro is an awesome thing, I feel like that's a little too generic. Every, you know, people know about it. But what people might not know about, and this is what I was really excited to pick up, is this little hub. So my Surface Pro only has one USB slot, which is not enough for me. Um, so I was able to buy this hub, and it sticks right into the side of it, and it actually converts the HDMI, the mini HDMI, to a regular HDMI port, mm-hmm. and it converts the one USB uh, input into three. And at the bottom, it has a slot for an SD card and nice. a mini SD card. So I just stick that right onto the side of the computer. It hangs right on there. It's made specifically for it, and I can do everything uh, right there. I, I got a an external hard drive that I've attached, a wireless mouse, and then also like I use a lot of SD cards when I'm doing video and audio audio work for uh, PGH museums. So I'm able to completely go on the road uh, when I am at work, and if I if I go on a lunch break or something like that, I can do some of the editing work while I'm there. Um, I can and then I can come home and do it, and, and it's just so convenient. This little hub has really uh, made the difference and really made this computer usable for me. Otherwise, it would have been, it still would have been usable, but it would have been a lot more difficult to do everything that I need to do. What is the brand of that? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not marked on there. <laughs> uh, it is not. But if you, you give me a second, I can find out for you because I just bought it recently, uh, so it should be right in my orders here uh, and there's comparable um, uh, if, you, if you just look for a surface pro uh usb adapters um like i'm seeing another one this was like it's more of a usb c based one for newer ones um but that looks like it's pretty standard that they have like the three usb and the hdmi output is yeah it and in this one it is called i have it up here it's from k tacky k-e-t-a-k-y uh, K Tacky, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it's great. I mean, I love the the Surface Pro. Yeah, you know, I really was interested in getting a MacBook Pro, and I got this thing, and, and I'm super thrilled with it. I'm actually kind of glad that the first computer didn't work out, even though I still love the MacBook Pro. Don't get me wrong. Uh, this thing, I love the touch screen, which I was used to using with my last laptop. Um, I, I I really love the new Microsoft um, operating system. I think it, it's greatly improved on previous ones. 
And it's just really a comfortable keyboard. It's really comfortable to use. And what I really appreciate about it is I'm able to upload the 4K video and I don't have to do, I don't have to create any proxy files, which is something I've had to do in the past. And that's really made editing so much quicker for me. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think I found a version of that here and we'll drop that link in there uh, for anybody. Actually, awesome. this, is, this, is, this is one with an ethernet port actually. Wow, mm. that's really nice. I'll go ahead and drop that in there. It looks like there's multiple versions of it as well if i could find the share button in this app thank you for hiding that there <laughs> uh awesome awesome so surface pro uh it, and pooping and you need that it, <laughs> perfect. Jeez. um but no i think like any of these, these devices especially with as expandable as uh, uh the ipad's becoming uh which i think we were talking about with Shola last week the, the ipad seems to start resembling a, a surface pro in the long run well, I've said that for a while that I felt like Apple was way behind when it comes to professional tablets because even Samsung beat them to the chase. And, they, and Samsung has a tablet that will work with a keyboard and it switches to their, um, I can't remember the name of that operating system, but they have their own desktop Dex. styled. Dex, thank you. Yeah. And it would switch to the Dex operating system. And, and that's a nice operating system. I used to have a, the dock for my Samsung when I had a Samsung phone. Mm -hmm. And I was really disappointed that the iPad Pro would not let you use a mouse. So I'm glad that they're moving in that direction. Yeah, and I even, think that will make them competitive. And even some pretty major improvements, it looks like, coming up on that, too. So, mm -hmm. Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So my awesome thing is the FCC announced today that carriers must adopt the stirred and shaken protocol by June 30th, 2021. A what? Well, the stir and I can't believe I, I'm interested. I got to do some more research on why they called it this, but pretty much what they're saying is so, so it's it's a it's a authenticated caller ID mechanism that validates and verifies. It does a handshake to make sure the number coming up on your caller ID is actually the number they're calling from. So mm. I don't know if this is you've ever run into this, but you occasionally get you know, a phone call and it's spam and you don't pick it up. And then you're like, Hmm, was this really someone I know? And you call it back and some random person picks up and you say, I just got a call from this number. No, you didn't. It's because someone was spoofing their phone number, which is why there's so many spam calls from numbers that begin with the same six digits as yours. So they try to make it look like it's a legitimate number. It is a legitimate number. They're just, borrowing it momentarily for caller ID purposes. Um, so this will specifically is designed to combat robocalls, <clears throat> especially ones that, that hide their phone number. Um, like I said, it's this stirred and shaken protocol. Um, and they're, they're claiming the FCC estimates that fraudulent call schemes cost Americans approximately $10 billion every year. Um, one of the things this will do is it will put a caller verified notification up on your device um, to show that the caller ID is, in fact, who it says it is. Um, most modern smartphones support the feature, so um, shouldn't be a big deal. Other handsets will need to be updated. And for those of us with old school 900 megahertz phones sitting around the house, wired on in you, you may need to to get a new new home phone oh, if no. you want to use this feature well thankfully that's probably not a large number but uh still like that's so you're telling me my rotary phone might not work <laughs> your rotary <laughs> phone may not work the tick 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 no not gonna work uh which is still in the basement of the uh where by where the studio used to be and is uh we have not had a phone line uh for 10 years i think Something I was gonna like say, are you keeping that in case like we go matrix style and you what? are you worried about them cutting the hard line or what? Yeah, uh, wait, no, not really. Wait, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> because even if I get a a phone line, it's gonna be over VoIP anyway. So like, it's still the same thing, right? If you had to, yeah, if you got a new phone line, but then they, I mean that technically they put that box in your house that converts mm -hmm. the the digital to analog, so the old school handsets work. Mm. Well, my awesome thing is, you know, uh, one of the, you know, of everything going on, at the very least, you know, we, we you know, aside from 
what is happening and, and the horrible thing that, that, that is surrounding that. Um, everybody adapting to this new way of life in, in the coronavirus generation here. <laughs> uh, it, it, there's, there's a lot of innovation and there's a lot of new things being tried that we have seen kind of growing in the last few years. And maybe the, the thing that kicks them over the edge um, uh, with this. One of those things is esports, apparently. Because uh, there's always that pie in the sky, like, oh, you know, uh, uh, maybe the NBA will just pl- can just play an, a league uh, uh, with NBA 2K with the players or something like that. Well, guess what? It's happening, guys. Uh, the NBA is reportedly planning players-only 2K tournaments that will air on ESPN. Of course, uh, they had to drop the season going into the finals. And I, I would say it's unlikely they're going to come back for or the, the playoffs in general, I guess. And same with hockey, too. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, uh, so, so that is coming up. And also, somebody who has already done this, Fox's virtual Texas NASCAR race sets an esports record with 1.3 million viewers, according to Fox News. And I believe uh, that they are going to, because um, that that was that was not done. That was on like maybe FS1 or something, or online. Uh, but this is actually going to continue to be the viewers across Fox and FS1 become the highest rated televised esports event ever and they're going to continue well, and how many how many people were drinking and didn't realize it wasn't a real race <laughs> <laughs> listen i haven't played a nascar game in a while but uh, the graphics the, the, the cameras kind of look off on this i don't know so 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 the biggest thing for me is when i imagine a nascar based game i still just think daytona usa the Sega I game. haven't played a NASCAR game in forever. I literally played <laughs> Daytona USA over Christmas because somebody had one in their basement. Uh, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised. We, I mean, esports continues. Obviously, people can play from their homes. There's big teams. They, I think some of those teams, you know, live in like a a commune. But <laughs> the, it, I'm really surprised that we haven't seen more of this, especially as I think it was at Madden does like the pre Super Bowl. They take the last Madden, pair mm-hmm. up the teams, and run mm-hmm. the simulator. Yep. I'm surprised that we haven't seen way more just simulated events. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we I, we do, uh, or Riz has done uh, uh, every year a uh, a Royal Rumble. Where uh, he tries to get the great Khali to win every year, uh, so so like you know, okay, it's happening in WWE, and and you can argue maybe WrestleMania should have just been on 2K <laughs> as well. We'll find out this weekend as they do an empty arena pre-taped WrestleMania. But uh, there's that. That's how they're dealing with it. But yeah, you know what might get me into esports? I mean, I, I am not somebody who, who appreciates it yet. Uh, but I think one thing that could really bring me into the fold is if they somehow were able to combine it with virtual reality, where I felt like I was in a crowd mm. watching something. Like, I think that would be super cool. I don't think that's too far away because there was already, uh, between N- NW- uh, N- NBA and WWE were both part of the... Uh, help me, Chilla, if you can, uh, with, if you remember the app. But there was an app that they were advertising. They have VR cameras, like the the mm. the 180 stereoscopic cameras at the games, at the wrestling matches, around around the wrestling ring, and they were presenting them in VR format. And it was like you could look around in the shot, and then and it was kind of you know it was 180, but you could look behind you, and you just saw like the logo or the match the match graphics or something in this like 3D set. Uh, when I was looking at the WWE stuff, I have not seen the NBA thing. So really, um, if you're talking about, you know, this exists somewhere. This game exists in this game engine. And and I don't think it would take terribly much for them to do a specialized version of it that they could plug in and do a virtual camera like that. So that would be what was cool. the racing car game for the the first Xbox at launch? The first Xbox? Like, for, like the, the, Forza? No, it wasn't Forza. I can't remember what it was. But that was one of the things you could do. It was like a street racing game, I think. Ridge uh, Racer? Krause, Krause is in the, the chat room. He'll remember. Like, it was one of the first ones to do really good, like, reflections off the trees and the, the glass of the, the car and stuff like that. Mm. Um, the uh, um, That game, you could actually replay the race and kind of float around in a camera angle view and, and rotate all around the, the, the game. So I'm, I'm really surprised we haven't seen more vr type stuff to to sit in 
on the the action. Um, was it the, pro- was it Project Gotham Racing? Project Gotham Racing. That was it. <laughs> um, yeah, that was like one of their launch titles. But mm-hmm. um, I, I I will say if if you get a chance, Brian, um, it's usually Friday nights at like ten or eleven on I think it's TBS or TNT. There's Krause with the with the Project Gotham. Nice one. <laughs> um, they do the oh, what's the game? It's like a capture the flag type game, and there's a couple different modes. Uh, uh, Counter Strike. Okay. So they do they do Counter Strike matches, and it's like an esports league, and it's it's fun to watch. I mean, you, you get into. I mean, I'm not like a fan of specific teams, but mm-hmm. you watch the players play, and it's kind of like it, it's like being back in college watching watching everyone play Goldeneye and rooting your friends on. So yeah, yeah. And, I'll be honest. Fun. I'm much more interested in that than I am watching like a, a basketball game in esports mm-hmm, or a mm-hmm. football game because mm-hmm. to me what makes sports interesting traditional sports is the you know the athletic ability of these people you know being able to see you know for hockey I'm a hockey fan being able to see Sidney Crosby fall to the ice and somehow get a shot off on his knees <laughs> just that athletic ability is incredible and someone you know playing the video game in a, in a sports sense like an actual sport in mm-hmm. esports to me it's like they're, they're not athletes in in that sense but to see something like golden eye or something like that to me that's much more exciting because that's not something that like you, you can like you, you can't go and see somebody gun someone down <laughs> like that in real right. life that's something that you know is, is a work of fiction and to me that's like kind of like an interesting strategy game mm. that i I really would be, I think, more interested in, in seeing personally. I think it's it's going to be a matter of two things to for esports to for for you to like it for the general populace to like it. Obviously, this is just kind of a replacement thing, and that's why we drew 1.3 million viewers for an esports game because it literally replaced the actual NASCAR race. But mm-hmm. for for esports as a whole to happen, there's two things. There's a the presentation. So you can understand what I've never played Counter Strike before, but here here is this thing, and it needs to be accessible to the to the, to the rest of us, right, or, or rest of everybody. Maybe not us on the Awesome Cast, but the rest of us. Quote air quotes, uh, and and also I think when they start telling that story, like you watch hockey because you're watching people that are really good at doing something physically that you can't possibly do. And I think mm-hmm. when it comes to video games, eventually you'll start noticing that feeling. Like, I mean, you, I mean, you've watched like you know somebody play Street Fighter or something. And you're just like, I could never beat that guy, right? Like it well, yeah. kind of becomes a, it's 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 still a a a, a top tier performance level, though not as physical. Um, it still becomes an impressive feat in a different vein, and I think that's where people see like you know the top. You know, a, a you know, I can watch a pro wrestler for ten bucks down at the uh, gym locally, uh, but to pay fifty bucks to go watch John Cena perform is a whole different story, right? Because that's the top of his game versus this guy that's just figuring it out in a in a in a, in a gymnasium. So, so I agree with that. I mean, I, I think of myself back when I was in high school. We we would have Halo parties, and I hated going to them because mm-hmm. these people played halo all the time and studied it and i would respawn and i would instantly be killed so i ended up giving up and i just started attacking my own players because yeah. it was the only way i could wow. kill anyone so yeah people hated me when i played I was but like yeah, yeah but to watch just... them play was more fun than me playing myself so i get that yeah you could definitely see like somebody who's really talented at it it can be interesting for sure we used to before online gaming became as prevalent, we used to rent out conference rooms in hotels and we would bring in a, a switch and a hub um, mm-hmm. and play, play all the local games, um, whether it be Halo or uh, Call of Duty, a um, couple plane flying games mm-hmm. um, that we played. And it was a lot of fun. Now, again, it wasn't, it wasn't a bunch of people that that's all they did was play, but we had, we had definitely had a good time with it. Well, I got a lot more video games I want to talk about, including uh, asking Katie later if what she if she thinks uh, Animal Crossing is going to go esports as well. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but in the meantime, hey, I want to give a shout out. Of course, uh, we've been telling everybody please support your local eateries, especially our good friends over at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. And we hope the Pittsburghers that listen to podcasting will support the pepperoni pizza that is providing the podcast. 
talking. I was looking for an RP. Uh, <laughs> I got to, uh, went down. We're, we're still, we're still uh, hanging out, grabbing, grabbing our, our weekly pie from them. I feel very lonely eating the pie. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know what? I think we, I'll, I'll start a round where I'll go pick up the pizza, drop off a few slices of chilla at least, and then like you know, Brian is just up the street. Uh, we, maybe, maybe we'll we'll work on this in the next couple of weeks yes. here at least. I mean, you guys are still quasi locally, so maybe we can do something about this. Uh, but any. Anyways, um, uh, Chilla Dutters, remind me of this after the show. Um, but anyways, no, please support them. Hey, I got to see Rico tonight. I know a, a lot of craziness going on, and uh, he, uh, and uh, uh, they had some change up in staff. But uh, uh, it was cool to see Rico for the first time in, in a while. I know he's usually at the PNC Park and the uh, East End locations, uh, all doing great. And, and good to see that you guys are all supporting uh, those guys as well. So please go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com for locations in the Pittsburgh area, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, PNC Park, still doing delivery, still doing pickup. Please go support them and all the local eateries, but especially our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Hey, I think I missed it last week and I have to apologize to Chachi, but uh, the game journey is still pressing on. <laughs> he's doing what? Oh, he's got some, he's got to have something to do. So but over there at thegamejourney.com, he's rolling through 1,001 games, uh, trying to get to 1,001 reviews. Uh, he's at game 119. He's still rolling through the wild and wacky world of Nintendo DS and Game Boy, it looks like, including Metroid Fusion. I think that was that was the Game Boy Advanced one, right? Uh, I love Metroid games. I've never really beat... No, I'm sorry. Ga- yeah, Game Boy Advance. Um, I don't think I've ever beat a Metroid. I almost jumped in... Not a- even the first one? Uh well, with the game genie, does that count? Uh, I I beat it without the game genie. It took me a long time, but mm, mm. interesting. Uh, so there's that. So so go check that out. He's got a lot of uh great articles over there. Uh, go relive your past. Uh, uh, and and let him know what you think of some of his reviews out there. So some big news from Podner uh, in the on, on the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Dark Sky has a new home, and it's Apple. Uh, Dark Sky, of course, the uh, the weather uh, technology app company that's that's been. I, I think it's still behind Weather Underground that I've been using for a while. Uh, and I love that. Uh, it was a subscription based um, app. Uh, it is it got purchased. It's been purchased by Apple. So hopefully that means your weather app is going to be a lot cooler in the near future. Um, and also you just Sherlocked all the rest of <laughs> the weather apps probably in the long run. Because I think like all the major ones that like people like her kind of build. And this is this is the one where where it's like super um, like, hey, where you're at, you're probably going to have rain in that area. Not like you're going to have rain in the Pittsburgh greater area. Like it's very kind of precise mm. and has really helped me out when I'm, say, Filming cars with a video, three thousand dollar video camera in the middle of a field all day in God knows where in America. Very helpful uh, to get these notifications. So, no, not Crimson Sky. That's a game for the Xbox. I know that. No Kraus. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a weather app. Joe, oh, Crimson Sky. No, that was the game we would play. That was the fighter plane game. Yeah, like the World War II fighter would... planes. Yep. Yeah. What's the what was the weather app that's kind of snarky that like would compare it to like the Planet Hoth or Oh, I don't remember. You know what I'm talking about though? Hey, the Dutters, do you remember that? I feel like that would have been no. one of your stories. Shoot, what is it? It's it's, it's got lots of swear words. <laughs> 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 weather app swear words. I'm Googling it. <laughs> weather app swear words. Wait, you, wait. What, it, what it, the people I feel bad for is if you were a fan of Dark Sky on Android, because they only have to like June. Ooh. Like they're gonna Apple's gonna pull it. Yeah, yeah. That's a shame. So so yeah, so like what what is gonna become of Weather Underground? What's gonna become of, of, of other applications like that? So uh because I mean this seems like it was kind of the the forerunner. Uh, partner's saying super local, super time precise. You will have rain in the next 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Although wow. I'm wondering if this is already constricting, like if all the writing was on the walls, because I noticed things were going away in Weather Underground. Like I always loved the widgets. It was always like I flip over and there's the widget to see what the day looked like. And I, I do remember getting the notifications of like, hey, it's going to rain in 15 minutes. And I stopped getting those at some point. And I, maybe this has been a long time coming over the last several months that, that you know, 
that they were redoing it. Uh, actually, Weather on Ground says that it's uh, information provided by IBM. So maybe they did do a restart. That's one thing mm -hmm. that I do like about Apple, too, is like whenever they make an acquisition like that, they truly integrate it into their software. Um, Android, for example, Google, like like they bought Waze, but like they didn't, you would have thought they would have taken the best of Waze and the best of Google Maps. and Oh, they are? They are. Uh, a lot of Waze data and features are, are starting to roll into to Maps oh, okay. and vice versa. It's like you're not getting the little like... Uh, Oscar the Grouch uh, icons for your cars, but uh, but like a lot of that data is is it, it, they oh, take okay. they took a while to do it, but you're yeah. starting to see that more and more there. Uh, somebody else okay. is, did somebody else want to speak on that? I thought I heard. Oh wait, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see what else we got here. I don't know Star Wars weather forecast. Um, no, no, Yahoo locked down our weather API. Nope, that didn't work anymore. <laughs> so, let's see what else we got here. Um, Brian, you had you had a, you had a story about Pornhub. Yeah, yeah. So they are are doing some interesting things. They are donating fifty thousand surgical masks to the uh, coronavirus front lines in New York City, which uh, New York City now is kind of the epicenter uh, in the world of of uh, the coronavirus crisis. Uh, probably because there's so many people that, that live there. So it's definitely great that they're doing that. Uh, they're try and they're also offering free porn to encourage social distancing. So they're doing their part to keep people in the house. And I, I could see that that could be really interesting. Uh, I, I, and they're also coming up with a, uh, a relief fund for uh, sex workers too, uh, which is nice. But I think that the porn, if they're going to offer the free porn, I think it could be really interesting. Like it could be like somebody who's maybe suffering from the coronavirus and a hot nurse walks in. Like I get to see some really interesting scenarios coming out of, of this, some really creative storylines. Uh, yes. And yes. <laughs> maybe, 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 you know, like, the, like there, there's a shortage of supplies, right? So like, you know, the patient lifts off his mask here, have mine. And it turns into some sort of like uh, sexy romance. Wait, or... wait, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you call it a sexy romance necessarily, but no, yeah, no, they've been <laughs> like, there were stories about them, them starting to use like do coronavirus porn like a month ago when the China stuff was happening. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then interestingly, when they, they provided it at home um, for at least a little bit uh, at the top, instead of Pornhub, it said stay at home hub. And it was their effort ah, to flatten nice. the curb. And uh, yeah, yeah, very. Well, I will say at least one company in the United States was taking the coronavirus seriously when it was happening in China. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> I'm curious about what uh, what happens to the numbers. Like, I, I can't wait to to see. You know, once the 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 curve has been flattened, things are, are leveling out. We see what 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 did Pornhub find find happen? Because I, I know Dutters, you like looking at the 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 numbers and stats over there. Oh yeah, that'd be great. I can't. I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> Just like to deep dive into that. Yeah. So especially, and especially with everything like from uh, Marvel to Disney movies, um, um, getting delayed. <laughs> what, what comes up in the search as as everybody's getting their fix? So, <laughs> anyways, um, let me try. Do we, do we have an update? Is is what are they doing about Black Widow? I know. Uh, I know. Wonder Woman got moved, but. I don't know if Have I we... heard. I, I heard that it did officially get delayed, and I don't know if there was a new date necessarily. Okay. Um, there was somebody so, uh, somewhere involved with the movie. Uh, actually, no, the guy that plays Harper on uh, Stranger Things that plays the uh, father. Mm -hmm. um, he, I think, he was pushing for them. Was like, yeah, they should just release it online. It's like, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know if they're going to do that with a Marvel franchise uh, tentpole like that. But I don't know. And does anybody have this Earth Cam? Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't open the story that Podner um, left in here. It's not opening for some reason. Want to track? Unfortunately, it's just coming up as an app for me. Earth Cam. It's it's an app. It's an app. Yeah, it's an app in the Apple Store. So Ooh, I got uh, if you it. Click it, it. Yeah, it works now. It's an Earth Cam, uh, so you can travel at home. It's a it's it's a it's a webcam collection. Hmm. So you can see, although uh, I don't know, like, like I'm looking at the, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the cam examples on the app here and it says, uh, let's see, New Orleans cam. That's probably does not look as busy as that example right now. Oh, there's a McDonald's. You mentioned the New York cam yeah, right the, now. Yeah, there's a New York <laughs> cam too. Cause I'm like, oh, look, a McDonald's cam. No, that's Times Square. Uh, yeah. I mean, 
that might end up depressing. Um, it oh, is yeah. a 4.99 app if you want to check that out. Uh, so uh, partner shared that. So oh no, and this just get. Okay, what was the 4.99 part? Oh, you can get all the in-app purchases for uh, 4.99. So it's probably expansions and okay. Yeah, I was giving. Can me you a... like host a cam that goes on here? Uh, I don't know. That'd be nice. I feel like so. Where where do you go for webcams? Like I feel like 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 things just have webcams on their sites at this time, like your local news or something. Like if I wanted to, because I've been thinking about this too. Because like if for a time I wanted to just put a camera out the front window here at uh, at at the studio and just have a you know a beach view cam, a neighborhood cam, and and just like because this is the main throughway for for this neighborhood. You know, like where would where would I put that these days? Why wouldn't well, you do the same thing? Why wouldn't you just point it out the window? What, what you... I will say I am looking into uh, wireless webcams right now that are there in go. outdoor. There go. And uh, there is one I'm looking at. It is, let me see if I can pull up the name here. It's 70 some dollars and it's it's rechargeable. And what's great about it is it, it uses a magnet. So uh, you don't have to actually drill into the wall or anything like that. I'm looking to put up two in my house. It's called, uh, it's from a company called Zoomamall, Z U M I M A L L. It shoots in 1080p. It, what's nice about it is it also has an SD slot on the actual camera, so you can record right on the device itself. It also will connect to Wi Fi. Uh, it's got two way audio as well, so you can uh, talk to people, and it does have motion sensor, and it's waterproof and night vision as well. So it, it comes with everything for. It's on sale right now for seventy one ninety nine on Amazon. Uh, we're looking to put one uh, up on on top of my uh, above my upstairs window to look down on the cars, and then we're also looking to put one uh, right at our doors. And that's the one negative part about my apartment is there are no peepholes to see who's actually ringing the doorbell. Mm. So we're, we're trying to solve that problem with a camera. But yeah, so we were looking into these, and, and that was perfect for me. I mean, it's rechargeable. I don't have to buy batteries. I don't have to run wires. And uh, you, you, it also has the the local recording as well, which is great. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I'll tell you what. I really like the I, the, the Wise cameras. W Y Z E. Yeah, those are unfortunately nice. they're not they're not rechargeable or wireless. But I even got for the for two of the rooms, they make an actual like wall mount that goes onto your kind of clips into the the outlet into the wall. And it's made it in, in our outlets, at least in, in the basement and in one of the other rooms are probably at about three and a half feet. Um, so you get a nice zoom of or pan of the whole room. Nice. Nice. Uh, well, uh, it, there's a lot going on here and a lot of adapting, as we said, and we're helping a lot of people out. Uh, please check out what's going on. Psychic Media Services here in-house. Uh, at, uh, at at the, at Sorgatron Media, uh, we're helping a lot of people um, um, adapt their podcasts, for instance, uh, so we can continue to keep uh, uh, producing the show, much like we are here tonight. You know, with Brian, like I said, Brian, Katie, uh, uh, Chilla would normally be in the studio, but with everything going on, it's good that we still have these remote capabilities, and uh, we are uh, uh, definitely definitely applying that to a lot of different. Um, uh, applications out there and helping others um, ad- adapt their uh, their messaging uh, and uh, uh, transitioning from live events that we'd normally be doing to whatever they may be uh, uh, doing for as a as a relevant alternative. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Let's be a sidekick in your superhero project. Sidekickmediaservices.com. Katie, now is the time where we get our amazing our, our awesome crossing. <laughs> awesome crossing. So, musical chairs. So yeah, if you mute, okay, wait, okay, that's the first thing. I read this article and it's just just digesting this. Well, first of all, there was uh, uh, leading into our conversation earlier was was about how you can poop a lot in in Animal Crossing. I think we've had a good conversation about that already. But <laughs> one headline, and let me see if I can pull it up. But it was it was something in the lines of. Um, people in Animal Crossing are doing high stake games of of musical chairs. Yes. What? Okay, so Animal Crossing is fun to play, but you kind of have to make like when you have other people you're interacting with, you have to make your own fun. There's like not things that you can, there's not things you can buy or make that are like multiplayer. 
So people were coming up with creative ways to play. Like, for example, when I play with my niece, Charlotte, we'll play tag or hide and go seek. And but, but apparently, these, but, oh, sorry. but you're saying there's not a tag mechanism. There's there's really when you're multiplayer, it's like you visit the island, you can see each other. And that's kind of it. Yeah, you can go through their houses. Depending if you're best friends, you can use an axe or you use a shovel on their island to dig stuff up. Like you can go to other like th- their neighbors' houses and check them out. But there's no like actual gameplay. Mm-hmm. Like there's not like an in like a um, like a mini game almost if you want to call it. Okay. For whenever you have multiple players, so people are making their own games up, including musical chairs. It looks like. <laughs> So and and I guess the fun about it, the fun part of this was when it gets down to the last couple of people, because much like many video games, um, Animal Crossing, your character doesn't always interact with the thing that you intended to interact with. Correct. So it becomes even more of a curious game when you can't get in the chair that you're trying to. I guess <laughs> is that is that is that how I'm reading this? Yeah, because I mean, you you kind of hope especially sitting is kind of funny because you try to sit sometimes and it just doesn't happen or you you're not trying to sit and you sit and you're like what are you doing friend <laughs> but there yes yeah, so it's, it's the added challenge of that and it looks like these players are betting lots of lots of bells on it that's mm. um money in, in <laughs> like, like how long would it take to collect a hundred thousand bells not okay <laughs> so you can sell you know you sell a lot of things you find things you sell them uh you can also do like the old animal crossing hacks where you can plant money trees so you can just literally have money growing trees or <laughs> do things mm-hmm. so, i mean it's not terribly long to get that much money if, you, if you're willing to put the work in so it's like a thing where like i've never played it before so you can actually earn money by playing the game rather than spending money is that well it's it's bells <laughs> in their world mm-hmm. so yeah so you can the as you go along you do different tasks somebody will give you money for doing certain things or mm-hmm. you know rewards or sometimes it's just buried in the ground <laughs> See, what i kind of like about that and what you were saying is like it seems like people are kind of creating their own storylines is that accurate mm-hmm. so you because okay, i love that yeah you can be anything you can have pretty much it's, it's really so you can buy things within the game to kind of customize what your character looks like but you also there's ways to like people will draw patterns. It's, it's like kind of like a, a square or and then it's like little squares within the squares, like this little bitmap where you can draw patterns and clothes. So you can wear your own custom clothes. So you can really like do a bunch of things within there that you know it's as it's as deep as you want it to be. <laughs> so that sounds like something I might like be interested in because I, I used to play Jedi Knight Dark Forces two and mm-hmm. it was a game that was literally designed for you to add your own levels and and things like that. And mm-hmm. people did. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And I even told you like in the instruction manual how to add like player created assets. So I mean that that to me was a lot of fun. This sounds like that would be kind of like not maybe lightsabers and stuff, but it sounds like it would be cool to to be able to create your own world almost. Mm-hmm. And you can do what you want. You know, you don't have to, if you're not interested in fishing, you don't have to fish. I mean, you can collect all the fish or you could not, or you can collect all the butterflies or you could not. <laughs> or you can get stung by wasps, whether you want to or not. <laughs> yes. Which I do multiple times. <laughs> um, so this did inspire me since I don't have a switch. I, I re-downloaded Animal Crossing for the iPhone. Um, it's on Android as well. And we were all playing this from day one, I remember. And I look and I look, I load it up and I'm like, huh, I'm wearing a Santa outfit. <laughs> and I go visit I go visit Dutter's Island and uh and I'm like, oh, she has a Christmas tree up. I wonder when we all stopped playing this. <laughs> so I think two Christmases ago is when was our cutoff date for Animal Crossing, which we probably played hard for about four months, maybe at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was the go to. You know, we were we were given kudos every day or whatever the the thing was, and and uh, no, it was that was that was the thing. They've done all. They they, they have been plenty of updates to it. So if you haven't visited that in a while, it might be worthwhile for you if you dedicated a significant amount of time to uh, Animal Crossing. Yeah, because you can't do a uh, Pokemon Go. So if you need your Nintendo, well, they're doing fix. they're doing stuff with Pokemon Go, and they're doing stuff with mm-hmm. Wizards Unites. And I noticed um, Microsoft on Minecraft Earth. They're doing, it's doing something where it's, it's doing step tracking. So it's, 
based on the number of steps you put in, it spawns more stuff mm -hmm. around. It, it almost like focuses spawns around you, which I thought was pretty impressive. So like one of the things that I read was like, go walk around your house twice, like around the outside, just stay in your yard and walk around your house twice. And it'll force a bunch of respawn, which I thought was pretty interesting. So the Steve's in the chat and he's saying, so this makes sense why someone on Facebook was asking how much they sold their term turnips for today. <laughs> yeah. So if you, like, you're just like, why are people just talking about turnips and growing away? Like I, I saw one too, where I was like, well, guess I'm just going to go grow some more turnips and just like, that's an interesting <laughs> response. So yeah. Yeah. Uh boy. Hey, there's some good news. Uh, John Krasinski of the office and uh, a quiet place. Sure, he's known for that too. Jack, what was the one? Jack, uh, Jack Ryan on uh, Amazon. He yeah. does that too now. So, so to keep that recent, um, he start he launched a YouTube channel dedicated to good news, uh, much in the vein of everybody else who's doing their, um, you know, high level uh, uh, uh broadcast show from their living rooms right now. Uh, he started a show where he's just again, it's good news. He's talking with uh. He's talking with uh, uh, Steve Carell about their early days on The Office. He shares a, he interviews actually a girl who came home from her uh, chemotherapy, and the entire neighborhood came out to applaud her Ooh. coming home in a social distancing celebration. Um, it, it, they, they talk about you know people applauding across across the world for the um, the medical workers. Uh, so it's a really good thing. So if you're kind of like me and you've developed this, well, this is how I'm going to digest things in the world along with the Fallon and Colbert and, and Trevor Noah kind of things. Um, this kind of fits right in there, uh, for you and, and helps you kind of feel okay about what's going on. Uh, so go look at it. It's on YouTube. He's got an episode and a little preview up, uh, so far. It looks like he's going to do it weekly and, uh, he is not wearing, I don't think he's wearing pants. Somebody was, I don't know which one I was watching today where they're talking about how they weren't wearing shoes. <laughs> so one of those, that's, that's been a lot of fun. Have you guys seen anything new in the last week that you're, you know, kind of a, a fun demonstration of uh, people doing things from home uh, for these major shows? Uh, locally musicians are, are doing local performances all across Pittsburgh. And a lot Absolutely. of times they've been coordinating actually, so uh, that way, every hour, there's like another musician and they're actually creating lineups nice. and they're also using. Yeah. And they're actually also using Zoom to create open mics as well. So, mm -hmm. so since the open mics can't happen, they've actually created uh, open mics through the Internet, uh, whether it be the Hambones open mic on Tuesday. I'm just mentioning the ones I know and the Acoustic Cafe on Monday out of the Fun House at Mr. Smalls. Those two open mics have been doing virtual open mics since they weren't able to meet in person. Mm -hmm. uh, Chilla, what stories do you want to hit on here? I see you got a couple at the bottom of the rundown. The one that I thought was interesting was the, you can put it up the sidekick G1. Um, there is Planet Computers is building a very unique physical keyboard smartphone, the Astro Slide. Um, it reminded me of kind of like a cross between the sidekick and the G1. Um, it's a 6.53 inch touchscreen um, Android 10 device. What I thought was pretty cool is the the screen slides to the side. And I had the T-Mobile Wing, which is a Windows phone slider like this one, where it slides landscape to reveal a big keyboard underneath. But what I thought was really cool is when it, it has what they call the rock up slide hinge. So when the screen gets all the way to the end, it kind of kicks up on an angle. The other thing that I thought was interesting about this one is that it that they're planning to also dual boot Linux. Mm. Um, it is being crowd for the only bad part is it is being crowdfunded on Indiegogo. So hopefully they they actually are able to make this device. But the early bird pricing was. Four hundred ninety-one dollars, uh, which is pretty good for forty-eight megapixel rear camera, six gig of RAM, eSIM slot, um, on top of two nano SIM slots, one hundred and twenty-eight gig of storage that also uses micro SD for expansion. So, thought it was a pretty cool looking device. Um, if they don't make it, hopefully someone else will. Um, and the keyboard looked pretty, like of pretty decent quality. 
the, the, yeah, we have. So it's like see, it's a, it's a slide out phone. It's a sideways. It's a long bar slide out phone. And you haven't seen it. Somebody out there wants that. <laughs> Somebody out there misses their keys. I want that. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, like I can see. You know, it's one thing to sit in, you know, you know, sit in an airport and trying to get my work done on a phone, but like just to have that little keyboard, right? To to be able to just kind of uh, sink your fingers into something, into that email, you know, because you're like, I'm not going to write that email because it needs a lot more than I can do on my phone. And not drive myself insane, right? I'll tell you what. In a, so I've done one of two things. I either pull out the iPad that has the, the keyboard on it, mm-hmm. um, or I've actually occasion on on the rare occasion where I do need to get that email out, but I don't want to don't want to thumb it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be long. I've I've become a user of the um, speech to text, hit the microphone button and just start talking. And then I go back through and do a little bit of touch up with some extra periods or fix a couple rambling ons. And it's not as bad as you would think. And the text to speech is actually pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Now you do look kind of weird. I actually usually, when I do that is I hold the phone up, like I'm talking on it because I feel like I'm weird sitting there with the phone <laughs> in front of me, like dictating into it. Uh, doing the, doing it the Kardashian way, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as the Kardashians do. All right. Well, Hey guys, we've been at it for a bit. Uh, thank you. everybody. First of all, thank you, Brian, for uh, joining us here from uh, right. Thank down you for welcoming me back to the A team or, or onto the A team. Live from year. right down the street. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He's 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 three blocks away, guys. <laughs> so, thank you so much again, pghmuseums.org. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Katie, for joining us and keeping us updated on the world of Animal Crossing. And uh, uh, may your turn up farming be fruitful. Thank you. You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people catch up on what's going on with you? Uh, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram mostly. Yeah, I have a list of my stuff there. Uh, my, my mom says hi. She's been asking about you. Oh, tell her you said hello. <laughs> if she's not in the chat room already. Uh, and also, no, nope, no, nope, that's Brian. We already talked to you. Uh, John <laughs> Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Oh. Uh, ChillaTech.net, John Chichilla on the Facebooks. And of course, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. A lot of things going on. Again, we're going to have the second of our series with the Jagoff Live. Uh, we've been helping to conduct and organize and help tech support everybody uh, doing their remote performances. Uh, one comedian and one musician every week. And I don't know the schedule off the top of my head, but you can go see who's coming up at you. Jag off. We will be live on their Facebook page and you can also join. We'll be streaming on the Sorgatron media, um, uh, social media across the board as well. And on, on Twitter, Periscope, uh, YouTube and Twitch should be live tomorrow, uh, Wednesday night, 7 30 PM. If you want to join that. And, uh, like I said, there's a, there's a lot of stuff. We had, uh, um, Byron Nash and comedian, uh, uh, Colin Chamberlain were a part of the first uh, rendition of this. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so go please uh, uh, join us for that Wednesday night. And, and we have a link over at sorgatronmedia.com if you want to see the first edition of that as well. Uh, Byron played uh, uh, three songs. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of great stuff going on there. Listen to your parents' podcast. Uh, Matt Carlin's has been putting together, uh, talking with other parents um, in these um, interesting times of being a parent. Uh, right now so that that's a live stream that we were doing on the listen to parents uh facebook page that is 9 p.m uh thursday nights and uh, i think we're going to keep that schedule and uh i think we're bringing back our indie mayhem show we're going to get some indie wrestlers together in a round table uh like this and just say how are you guys handling not wrestling for the last month in <laughs> maybe the near future uh so uh we'll be touch points i believe the beast man is going to be earmarked for that is is the one confirmation i got i should probably book more thank you everybody thank you everybody supporting this and and uh sharing things throughout the um week over on the uh and, and brian had an issue with his tv kicking on because <laughs> of a fire t- 
yeah. Mark Cuban. If I, I don't know if anybody asked me anything, but I literally like walked away from this to turn it off. Like it started going on. I was afraid it would bleed through the show. I heard something. I'm like, who has people over? Like it doesn't. I'm like, I'm doing. I'm doing the math in my head of where everybody's at. I'm just like, wait a minute. I so think the fire like, cube kicks off and it sent it to like the actual antenna mm. was the problem. I didn't actually have the TV turned off. It's so. that kick on thing. Like I know my Apple t- my Apple TV. So if you're watching Apple TV. And then you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go play Xbox. And you flip over to the Xbox uh, HDMI. When the Apple TV goes off, it turns off the TV, even though it's mm. not on that channel. So, like, Missy's in, the, Missy's in the middle of her Assassin's Creed, and she's like, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.